Okay, so here we are at Akarua, made a impromptu visit here, like we nearly always do. Um, just cruising, it's 12 o'clock, no, well, it's 1 o'clock, and uh, we're going to go for a, a track, a bit of a drive, it's only two hours. Wanted to see some water holes and stuff that they haven't, we hadn't seen before, that we knew had water in them. The last time that they've been in drought, it's been terrible up here, and it wasn't real flash, so... Um, the Echo Backtrack trip is one of the ones we did last time, and that was amazing. Um, but it was very dry, uh, and so uh, because we we're having a cruise here, we didn't really want to do a whole day's trip. So we've done this two-hour one, which taken to a water hole, which will have water in it. It'd be nice to you know, see something out here with water in it, just to see the contrast between what it was like last time and what it's like now. So it's Stubbs Water Hole, self-drive one, which we're doing today. Um, I'll let you know how it goes after I finish my burger from the shop. Great burger, by the way. Um, fantastic. So these guys had a lot of rain a couple of months ago, and you could tell when you look the roads and the washouts on the way in, and they're just, they were obviously trash. They're mint now. They've been um, obviously um, had work done to them and maintained. Um, but I knew we were up for that before we got off the asphalt because on the main drag to Flinders Ranges Highway, I think it's called, uh, heading north, um, when you get just past uh, Wilpena Pound, there is some washouts on the main road. Um, and you can see where all, all the debris that's been washed down creek beds have had nothing in it for ages. All of a sudden, it just pushed all this sediment across the road and you can see that they've had to clean it up and it's still on the side so um, it'll be interesting to see how it is uh, now a few months later it would have been great to be in here maybe a month maybe three weeks after would have been really cool um, but anyway we're here now and we're going to make the most of it so I'll uh, check in later on hoping that the sun isn't going to go down on the wrong side of the mountains of where we're going because I haven't checked that out so hopefully we get some good shots uh, but well it is what it is Right, so we're at some orca walks, and if you haven't seen them before, there's something we're looking at. This is orcas, the uh, uh, type of clay that the indigenous people uh, get their uh, their face paint essentially from. Um, and this is a little bit of orange colour, so I'll just turn you around. And I'll we're in the shadows here a little bit, so it's a bit harder to see, but this is what it is. You can see that it's sedimentary and forms over time, pressure. Now, I asked specifically not to scratch at it so it doesn't deteriorate, which is probably a fair call. Anyway, moving on. So we're at Livelihoods Gold Mine, or Gold Find. And we've got a bit of a mine shaft here. Um, it looks pretty cool. Um, see if I could show you what it looks like. Don't know how deep it is, maybe. Five, six meters down to there. It's kind of cool. Gold in the area. It's lots here actually, like all sorts of minerals in Arkarua. Um, the guys here know so much about it, and it was really cool listening to them the whole time when we were here last time. But uh, everything for the life of me. So um, I'm not going to try and tell you. 
But there's lots of uh, uranium here as well, which is a big thing. Um, and lots of rocks which glow under UV right, light. Um, so it's really worth coming to Arkaroo to have a look and ask the guys about this stuff. Um, they do a lot of astronomy as well. Um, and they've got their own observation stuff here and they've got special license because it's so dark here at night that they can see certain things in the sky that you can't see from the light pollution further in town. So it's well worth coming here and the guys here, particularly Doug and his son Mark, are really brilliant with all that stuff. Really smart guys. So yeah, well worth it and make the most of it while you're here and do the tools. Um, we're doing a self drive one and there's a few to choose from. Ridge top one is well worth doing. You can't, that's not self drive, you have to go with them. Uh, but that is worth doing as well. Anyway, back on to what we're doing. I'm going to uh, share as much as I can while I'm out here. So, uh, behind me, you can see it. And I'll just switch you around so you get a better view of the tree instead of me. So, this I believe to be a native orange tree. So, um, I reckon in spring is when they flower. Well, fruit. It's this flower that it has, and it's got lots of little ants crawling on them. You might see. You might see. Um, okay, it's obviously sweet. There's some ants. Yeah, so uh, apparently these um, have a fruit which starts off green and goes orange, and then more ripe it gets, uh, it gets purple. So, in the distance, this is what the tree looks like. Go up and over Jasper Twins. It's a two-wheel drive track to the, to the right and a four-wheel drive track to the left. So, we thought we'd go over the top and have a look to the views. Um, so, here we go. And on the other side, apparently, there could be some sturdy desert pea, even though that it's early March. Uh, they had some rain a while ago, so the, uh, apparently there's some flowers out. So if we're really lucky, at the wrong time of year, I think, we will find some surplus pea, and if that's the case, I'll be sure to show you. Like this, this is considered a two wheel drive section. You might be able to do it in two wheel drive if you had a four wheel drive. looks what we think is Tilliot or Tylite Gorge um, and there used to be water here not that long ago by the looks of things as you can see on the ground it's all dried up and there's some spots where animals have been digging to try and find water by the looks of things they haven't found any or if they did it was a while ago Rock formations around here are great. But just another cried out, dried out creek bed by the looks of things, this one. Here's something for you. Life. Just as we thought there was no water down here, just went around the corner. Got mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes. Dragonflies. And we've got Lots of tadpoles. Lots of them. 
nearly frogs. <laughs> so there is water. Just had to go around the corner a bit further and we found some. Which is kind of cool. That's what I come here for again this time. Wanted to see the water, knowing that they'd had some. So I'm pretty happy actually to be honest. I still, I still don't know where tadpoles come from when there's been no water for years and all of a sudden there's rain and all of a sudden then we've got tadpoles and frogs. But it's cool. I'm sure someone can explain that to me. Just have to ask the right person. Which means there's possibly snakes. Um, I don't know if they have red belly black snakes around here, but they would love to be around a waterhole full of frogs. So um, let's keep exploring. I don't know if you can see that. But there's some frogs in there. Some have hatched. Stubbs Waterhole, filled by Arcarula Creek. It is semi-permanent. The rock face of the waterhole is compo composed of boulders and ground up rock flour dropped by icebergs during the I have no idea. Ice Age 740 million years ago. This rock is known as Tylite, as what we tried to pronounce before. A semi-permanent waterhole, Stubbs is filled from the Arcarula Creek. The rock face of the waterhole is composed of tilite, a combination of rocks ground together by glacial movement during the Sturtian Ice Age. Take a walk along the creek to see all the different colored rocks that don't match the cliffs. These creek beds, these creek bed rocks are from another source and much younger than the tilite boulders that make up the vertical rock face. Over recent years, there has been concerted effort to control the outbreak of Mexican poppy in this area. If you see any or have any questions, please help us out. Right, so made it to Stubbs waterhole. And there's water in it, fortunately. Mm. This is grouse. This is why I come back here to have a look. So I'll give you a squiz. There's heaps of life down here. I'm sure there'd be other things like kangaroos and yellow-footed rock wallabies and anything else that you can think of. Come down here, potentially emus. It looks just amazing contrastingly different to last time I was here and it was a drought and there was absolutely no water at all. other hope we've got kind of this a bit slower than us in their hylux and the leaf spring we're in. Probably very little weight in it. It's, it looks like they told a caravan like damper or something. Hitch that they have. Nice to have people there. But I'm thinking that perhaps it'll give you better perspective of, of what we're driving over like see. on the video that you can't really tell how steep it is or things like that. 
not good at steep where we are driving to the riverbed. Anyway. Green down here, bottom of all the uh, ranges around us. The creek obviously flowed, flowed. We're heading away to Akarua Springs at the minute, which is no surprise because it's gotten a whole lot greener all of a sudden. So here we are at uh, Akarula Springs. Also has water in it. How good's that? Flip this around, shall I? It's a great spot. You'd love to camp here, I reckon, but you're not allowed to, I don't think. And you're also not allowed to swim in the swing hops. And I think there's a few reasons for that. Well, they're not called swing hops, are they? They're called water holes. Um, and I think partly it's because it's stagnant water and it's not good for your health. But the other part is possibly due to um, uh, environmental reasons. So it's probably not natural for a whole heap of humans to go swimming in at once with God knows what on. So um, it's probably another part of it. It could be um, cultural reasons, but I'm not sure it is. I think it's more environmental and health. Anyway, great spot. If you haven't been here, you got to get here and check it all out. So I woke up this morning here in Arcarola, 
last day here. And uh, it's raining. <laughs> Different. It's not flogging down, but I mean, it's a little bit damp when you look around. Uh, car's wet. rooms, a bit of water on the ground, might not seem like a lot but I think that's kind of cool that I was here when it rained.